Hello, Bill Johnson here with Johnson Aviation with another maintenance moment. As you can see on the Cessna 180 project, we have pretty much gutted the entire panel, taken everything out. We've left the existing wires coming mostly from the wings on both sides. There's a nav light on the right side. And the plan is to start to reassemble the panel. Now, this particular customer wants to make this a breaker panel, put his radios here, we'll put the intercom here, and this will remain a glove box. We do have a new floating panel coming from Aerotronics, a very nice panel, and we're putting a couple of G5s in the panel as well as a JPI 930. Down here we'll put a Garmin um, transponder GPS as well as a Garmin comm. Now, one of the challenges in mounting the radios in that particular spot is that the T-bar for the yoke comes back and prevents you from supporting those radios, typically up to the glare shield is often where they're supported. But in this case, we can't do that. So I've had to come up with another method of mounting these radios. I've made an avionics tray that goes here and it'll provide upward support to the radio stack, and I'll show you that here in a moment. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna reuse these holes here for various breaker switches for nav lights and landing lights and pitot heat. The start button will remain where it is, and we'll put our master solenoid switch there, and the rest of the breakers down here. So quite a lot to do. Um, interestingly, this plane comes with rudder trim, I think that was put on sometime in the late 60s. And this plane also has a the Robinson drooping aileron conversion. And let me show you that since I'm here. So here's the flap handle, a manual flap handle. You'll notice when the flaps go down, the ailerons also come down. So that's a very nice feature of this plane. And this plane is really made for stole with the uh, leading edges as well. So a very nice airframe. We've already completed several mods I've talked about in other videos. And now we're gonna work on the panel and the engine has shipped from Continental. And you can see our new engine mount being, being uh, placed on the airplane. Here's a pile of, of wires and other components we've pulled out from behind the panel. And that's just one of a couple of large piles that we have created and subsequently cleaned up. Let me walk over here to the table and I'll show you the radio stack that we fabricated to put in the plane. So here's that avionics tray I was talking about. So this tray, if you envision me sitting in the pilot seat, will go forward to aft and be supported on the duct in the back of the firewall. That tray will then support this radio stack, which goes like this with those legs on the side to support it, and then it screws to the front of the panel. In addition, we will be putting our GAD29 on the avionics tray, so it'll slide in here, like such, there's some holes. And I have put uh, nut plates on the GAD29 to allow it to be screwed on there easily from the bottom and then slid out and lift it out if it does ever have to come out. We've also put some uh, attachment points on the side of the avionics tray, again, to support the rails of the avionics trays. The GAD-13 will mount here on the side. You can see, again, I've put a couple of nut plates that'll simply screw on there like that. Again, very easy to get off if you ever need to. It's important when you're doing these projects to think about the next person and how easy it'll be to work on and maintain the plane. There's a lot of hours that owners spend for mechanics just trying to get to things before they can even do any, any value added work. So I've tried to take that into account. All of this comes apart very easily. If they ever wanna change a radio, they can take that all out, put a new tray and put it right back together. Here are the two radios. This is the Garmin GPS transponder, and then a Garmin comm. So those are the radios that are going in, along with the GAD29 
MAGAD 13. Okay, I will give you an update once I have this installed in the plane and show you exactly how it all went in. Okay, we have the Avionics tray mounted in the plane. You can see that uh, it supports the GAD 29. We also put a, uh, a grounding bus here to connect all of our grounds. And it's gonna be grounded to the airframe. And uh, the rack fits over the top of this. So I wanted to give you a view of the avionics rack before I put the rest of it together. But that is how the avionics tray goes into the plane. Okay, here we go. We got the uh, radio racks in the plane. Of course, it sits and mounts on top of the avionics tray. You can see the bracket there in the back. The tray is supported in the back, the rear side by the, the ductwork, and on the front side by the panel. You can see the GAD 29, as well as the racks. I'll give you a view from the top. There's our GAD 13 mounted there as well. Most all of it uses nut plates, so it's very easy to come apart. If we ever need to change out the radio or do something different. We're gonna paint the panel, the broader panel, a flat black. We're gonna replace that one knob that's broken, but this will be painted flat black. And of course, everything labeled nicely. And then the new Aerotronics floating panel up top. Well, we're finishing up the day with the installation of the COM GPS antenna. It has both the GPS and the COM function all in a single antenna. Very nice unit, rather expensive at 700 plus dollars, but a very nice antenna. You can see on the inside we have installed the doubler to give it extra support to prevent any kind of fatigue cracking of the aircraft skin.